Hey YouTube, what's up? It's CS back here with another installment, and here is my review for Strike Force Rock Gold vs. Jardine. Alrighty, folks, well, what did you guys think of that Strike Force MMA card? In my opinion, it definitely delivered because everything that happened on that main card, you know, I thought had a solid likelihood of happening, you know what I'm saying? So I can't exactly hate on the obvious. And if you are hating on the main card, it must be because you were bored at times watching some of the fights there. You're probably unhappy when your boys lost, or you really thought that someone who lost should have won. You really believe that. In my opinion, I would have thought that you're out of your mind for you to go against some of the favorites that want here. All the favorites I want here. I thought that if you went against King Mo, I thought you'd been crazy. If you went against Lawler or Woodley or Rockhold or Safdine, I thought you would have been crazy. You're supposed to pick the fighter who you think is most likely going to win the fight. So, if you actually believe that the other person will most likely win that fight, then pick them. You know, that's a legit reason. But if you believe someone's actually going to win that fight, and you're not picking them, then the only reason I see that's acceptable is if you're like that person's brother, or friend, or fam. You know what I'm saying? But... If you're just trying to pick someone else just to look cool, that ain't right. That ain't right. So don't come on to the comment boards of mine and tell me that someone's going to win and you're not giving me a good enough explanation why. Or don't, you know, make your video and tell me all this about someone else. And it sounds like you're about to pick them, but then for some reason you go the other way. You don't come up with a good enough reason to. You know, that's all I'm saying. So just think about that for a second. But before I start breaking down this card fight by fight, I just want to let you guys know about something I've been involved with for quite some time now. Some of you guys do know that I am in this YouTube MMA prediction race along with five other MMA YouTube predictors. And yeah, we're trying to get to 200 picks and the person who does it the fastest gets an MMA t-shirt from the rest of the people in the race therefore wins the contest so yeah i've tried to get to 200 and right now i'm behind surfer ken and bet mma it makes sense those guys are pros so yeah you know me and the rest of the pack have uh some work to do and hopefully those guys don't do as well in you know cards to come so i will reclaim that first place so we'll see about that but i do co-sign everyone in this prediction race so go check out their channels i'll leave somewhere leave links uh you know on the standings and in the description below as well so go check them out but folks let's finally get to some fight review shall we of course let's start off with the main event between luke rockhold and keith jardine for the middleweight championship of strike force of course luke rockhold the champion and keith jardine the challenger keith jardine's first time at 185 he didn't even win his last 205 bout and of course luke rockhold in his first title defense after he uh out decision Ronaldo Jacare Souza and that was really impressive in my opinion just because he was able to look good against one of the best 205ers in the world someone that most people thought he had no chance in so respect to my boy Luke Rockhold he looked good there and he looked good here again against Keith Jardine it's just he's the better athlete than Keith Jardine he's a better technical striker better grappler it didn't go to the ground but if it did I would imagine Luke Rockhold being on top and Keith Jardine defending subs that's how I'd envision that shit but it did stay standing and uh, Luke Rockhold did his thing, you know. Keith Jardine, the guy really only has a chance against you if you choose to stand in front of him the whole time, you know, where he's able to uh, kind of pick you apart with uh, hooks and leg kicks. And that's kind of Keith Jardine MMA. It makes sense to why he outstruck dudes like Forrest Griffin or Chuck Liddell because they really don't use uh, angles that much, you know. They kind of just stay in front of you and just throw, you know. Maybe they'll throw hooks or overhands, in that spot but they don't do a lot of um you know footwork shifting around and that's something luke rockwell did here it's just you know he was pretty much dancing circles around keith jardine as he was out striking him so jardine was you know uh just in survival mode in my opinion of course he uh gassed out early in that first round just by uh taking a lot of shots he started dropping his hands early and of course uh rockhold was opening up with pretty much everything you know he threw a spinning back kick that hit jardine some stefan leko right there and yeah Luke Rockhold, he looked all right, and eventually he uh, punched his lights out. So solid win for uh, Luke Rockhold. What's next for him? Honestly, I hope the UFC. You know, I, I really do look like uh, I really do like Luke Rockhold. I think he's a very good prospect, and I think uh, he has the potential to be top ten in the UFC, in my opinion. But for Strikeforce, like I don't know why he wasn't fighting Tim Kennedy. Tim Kennedy was 
uh, on a two-fight winning streak himself, and I hope they make that fight happen if he is to remain in strike force, which he looks like he is. So, yeah, you know, that's what I look for for Luke Rockhold. I think that should be a pretty good fight, pretty good test for him. And of course, uh, Keith Jardine, what's next for him? Can't win at 205, can't win at 185. He's old, you know, his style really hasn't evolved body bag I think that's it for him in my opinion because I really don't see what else he does in his career he's already beat standouts like Forrest Griffin and Chuck Liddell like I already mentioned so yeah I think it's time for Keith Jardine to call it quits because you know his conditioning and his chin ain't getting any better and neither is his technique so body bag Keith Jardine alrighty folks now let's move on to that Robbie Lawler Adlin Amagov middleweight bout and yeah shame on you if you picked uh, Adlin Amagov because you mostly you most likely picked him to Stand in front of Robbie Lawler and be able to outstrike him. Because uh, from what I know, from who I've seen picked uh, Adlan Amagov in their videos or uh, in my comment board, they said that he's just straight up going to outstrike Robbie Lawler. Just because Robbie Lawler lost to two submission grapplers as of late doesn't mean his striking you know, is inferior to this guy's. You know what I'm saying? This guy has been outstriking cans. You know, guys who I don't consider, you know, championship level fighters or uh, even uh, top 15 fighters Robbie Lawler is definitely a top 15 fighter you know merit wise you know he's I would say a top 15 fighter for sure so how is this guy on this level you know if you were to say just top 10 middleweight strikers Robbie Lawler is definitely in there just because of his uh, retarded power and yeah he definitely showcased that in this Amagov fight and not only thought his power was better of course his power is better but I think his technique's better as well. You know, um, he uh, throws solid hooks. And, yeah, you know, if he catches you with one of those, then it's over. Uh, his knees are pretty solid. Of course, he's thrown flying knees in, in the past before. And uh, he didn't hesitate to pull the trigger on this one. He caught Adlan Amgov sleeping after uh, they were stood up after the, you know, illegal knees and shit. So, yeah, solid win for Robbie Lawler. He finished him off with punches after the flying knee. So, yeah, glad to see a win for him. What's next for him? Hopefully the UFC, in my opinion, because... It's not like he's near a title fight in um, Strike Force because he lost to Kennedy. He lost to uh, Souza. So, yeah, I think he's UFC bound unless they want to match him up with, like, a Scott Smith or something like that. I think that would be not good. So, yeah, uh, Robbie Lawler to the UFC, please. I can definitely see him headlining a uh, free card there. As for Amagov, you know, to me, he's minor leagues. You know, he really didn't warrant um, any status of being a good prospect in this fight at all and this was a shot so yeah i think he's going to be straight up on strike force challengers cards uh for the future so yeah that's it for that but again another mismatch if you are psyched for strike force you know having its renewal for 2012 it's because you like seeing these mismatches i would say because i don't see how this is any good for mma whatsoever you know the ufc uh regardless of you who you hate regardless of who you hate at the top at the UFC, uh, for the most part, I think you know uh, having the UFC uh, is convenient for MMA. You know who is the best because the best fighters pretty much fight the best. So I got to hand it to them for that. You know for making it at least look like a sport, like other ones, like the NBA or the NHL or that NFL or the MLB, where the best play the best, and uh, that's why I like about the UFC. So if I sound like a UFC head to you, sorry about that, but. You know, it is what it is. I just like seeing people on the same level go at it with other people on the same level. You know, champions versus championship contenders. Top 10s versus top 10s. Top 15s versus top 15s. Top 25s versus top 25s. Prospects versus, you know, guys who are on the same level with them merit-wise. You know, I just think that makes a lot more sense. And guys like Robbie Lawler should not be facing guys like Adlan Amagov. Just saying. And speaking of another mismatch in terms of merit and in terms of skill set. Wow. King Mo versus Lorenz Larkin. You know, Lorenz Larkin, you know, if he got taken down by Jean-Pierre Volante, what's going to happen when he faces King Mo? You know, one of the best wrestlers at 205, one of the best wrestlers in MMA. Guy's been pretty much been able to out-wrestle everyone except for, you know, Feijal Cavalcante. And, uh, yeah, Feijal is definitely 10 times better the defensive wrestler than Lorenz Larkin because Lorenz, Lar Lorenz Larkin got taken down at will. You know what I'm saying? So... Yeah, King Mo for the win all day. Uh, Lorenz Larkin does have some flashy striking. Pretty exciting dude. Pretty solid power in his hands and his feet. But he's not supposed to be at 205. You know, you're a 5'11 striker at 205. You know, absolutely not. You know, just cut some weight, make 185, and outstrike some dudes there. And I actually wouldn't mind seeing um, Larkin go up against, like, a Robbie Lawler or, uh, 
you know, a Tim Kennedy, I think those fights would be pretty compelling. But him versus King Mo, body bag, you know, it makes sense. King Mo via for, uh, second round TKO. That's what I picked. And yeah, that's what happened. So what's next for King Mo? You know, like, who do you give him? You know, 205 is pretty depleted too. So yeah, um, maybe a rematch with Fei Zhao. Who knows? Gegard, I don't know. One of those rematches because I can't really think of anyone else. So, yeah, something's got to give. But as for um, Lorenz Larkin, like I said, I think he should be middleweight bound. I think he just got scared out of the 205 division by King Mo. So, yeah, I think that's what's best for him. And next, we're going to look at that Tyron Woodley, Jordan Meehan welterweight bout. Folks, if you were picking Jordan Meehan, you were banking on Tyron Woodley to have a poor game plan and not wrestle. Or you're banking on him to do what Tarek Safdie and Paul Daly couldn't do, and that's stuff Tyron Woodley takedowns, keep it standing, and outstrike him like that. Now, really? You, you Some of you guys picked him to do that? Really? Is, is he really better than Tarek Safdie or Tyron Woodley in terms of defensive wrestling? I didn't think so. You know, he's not as athletic as those guys. He doesn't. He isn't as strong as those guys. And... Yeah, he doesn't have as much counter-wrestling experience from what I know. So, yeah, I don't see how he was going to get it done. Sure, he's really experienced, but, you know, he's fighting in Canada, guys. Um, I live in Canada. There really isn't much um, you have to deal with in terms of wrestlers around here. Yeah, you know, this ain't the U.S. where you're fighting in the Midwest and you have to deal with wrestlers. You know, Jordan Meehan has like a 22-7 and record or something like that because he was fighting in matchups that pretty much favored him. So, yeah, what can I say? He is an electric striker. Don't get me wrong. He's very good there. But is he going to be good enough there to outstrike Woodley when Woodley's not taking him down? Definitely not. Not from what I saw. And uh, Woodley was holding his own on the feet. But for the most part, Woodley was taking him down and holding him there. And should have won a 30-27 decision across the board. Yet, it was close in some people's eyes. Because Mean was throwing elbows from the bottom. And Woodley wasn't doing much besides staying on top. But, from what I remember in John Fitch fights, that would be a 30-27 across the board. So, why isn't it 1-4 Tyron Woodley? Yeah, I, I don't know, man. I thought that was kind of disgusting. So... You know, I don't know what you guys want me to say, but uh, MMA is a joke because of this shit. You know, someone should look at these fights and say, hey, it's obvious that the one person's winning. Really? You actually, like, to the judge out there who actually gave this to me, you actually thought me and won that fight, 29-28. I want to know what two rounds he won and why, because I, I couldn't see it. You know, maybe in another universe, but not this one. And for the most part, the way a judge fights in this one... Yeah, that's definitely an L for Jordan Meehan. So, yeah, solid win for Tyron Woodley. What's next for him? I don't know. Hasn't he fought all the welterweights? Like, I don't think he wants Safadine again. Especially the way Safadine looked. So, yeah, I think he should go to the UFC because uh, the welterweight division there is pretty much non-existent. Because besides Safadine, who else is good there besides Meehan? Because he just beat him. So, yeah, I think he should be UFC bound. As for Meehan, quality fighter. Uh, defensive wrestling wise against some of the bulls in the UFC yeah he's gonna get fucked so I don't know what's next for him he has some things to work on but next up lastly we'll take a look at the ballot that kicked off the main card welterweights Tarek Safdine and Tyler Stinson went at it you know Tarek Safdine's my boy I like his skill set you know he uh, has solid defensive wrestling and that helps when you want to keep it standing so yeah solid technical striker you know Shiai Shinkai karate background um, Solid kicks, solid punches, um, always keeps his hands up. You know, combinations are pretty solid. Yeah, the guy's a pretty solid fighter. He has decent powder power as well, and I thought it was decent enough to um, get the best of Tyler Stinson by round two. I thought he'd be able to TKO him from there, by there, but that didn't happen. Um, Tyler Stinson actually gave him a really good fight. You know, uh, Tyler Stinson, uh, you know, lengthy dude. You know, he does have solid power, you know, that elbow cut him in round one after uh, Tarek was controlling the fight with his... Um, you know, technical striking. He got shook up by that uh, elbow, and it became a different fight from there. Uh, Tyler Stinson tried to open up more with his um, his striking and uh, luring Tarek Safdie into a brawl, but Tarek quickly took him down, and that's pretty much uh, what won him the fight. You know, takedowns. He did it again in round two, and in uh, round three, you know, he, he got him there as well. But of course, um, Tyler Stinson was making it close every time it was on defeat because. Um, Tarek Safdine just wasn't himself after that elbow on the feet, you know what I'm saying? Just because he couldn't see out of his eye, 
um, after he took that elbow because blood was coming out of his uh, eyebrow, you know, was dripping down into his eye, couldn't see right, and he just couldn't exert his game plan as well as he should have, you know, if he were to stay standing, which I'm sure he wanted to do. So that was unfortunate for Tarek Safdin, but what's next for him? Again, there really isn't anyone for him to face in welterweight at strike force. Maybe Paul Daly. I'd like to see that fight happen. I think that'd be pretty fun. I'd like to see what game plan he'd come up with that one for that one. Who knows? But yeah, he definitely won the fight. You know, it went to a split D for uh, Tyler Stinson. Now, you know, I I kind of expected this thing to go to a split D just knowing how judges are. But the, again, the Mian fight, that was just disgusting. That was all Woodley. So don't know what to say about that split decision as well. That kind of still rubs me the wrong way. But yeah, I still thought Tarek definitely won this one. But I wouldn't see, I wouldn't be surprised to see a uh, judge go for Tyler Stinson. That's what we saw, right? So yeah. You know, for Tyler Stinson to get one judge out of this bout, good for him. We'll see what's next for him, but again, Tarek Safnin, he ended up getting it. But there it is, folks. That about does it for my main card review of Strike Force Rockwell vs. Jardine. Unfortunately, I did not catch the prelims on Showtime Extreme, so if you guys want to tell me what happened there, please do so in the comment section below. Let me know what your thoughts are overall on this event and uh, what I had to say about it. That would be cool. And yeah, I look forward to what you guys have to say. And I hope to see you come my UFC 142 picks. Aldo versus Mendez, that looks like an eventful card. My pick should be up shortly after this video was uploaded. So hopefully I see you there. Again, uh, take a look at uh, the predictors in that prediction race. I co-sign all of them. So, you know, go check them out and show them some love. And yeah, I guess that about does it for me. So deuces for all my supporters, bruises for all my haters. Thank you once again and take care.